NCAA tournament with the field of 64 has tipped. So who better to have as our first guest with the tournament up and active than the current active all-time leading scorer in the history of the NCAA tournament, two-time national champion Christian Leitner. How are you, Christian? Hey, Rich. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Are you kidding me? This is it's great. It's great to have you on this show. Certainly, with the tournament going on and what was on ESPN all week long with your with the documentary uh, bearing your name. Uh, did you know that the documentary was going to be called that when you first signed on and said, I'll, I'll be part of it? <laughs> no, they did not tell me that they were going to put that title to the movie. Uh, they first said to me, Christian, we want to make a movie about you. Uh, I think most athletes would say, great, that's awesome. So that's what I said because I felt like it was an honor. Anytime ESPN wants to make a movie about you, there, there has to be something you did right. So... I said yes, I felt honored, and then they popped the title on me maybe three or four months later, <laughs> and I kind of laughed it off because I've been laughing off that whole hate despise thing for a little while, and um, I can understand it. I mean, if you're not a Duke fan, you got tired of seeing my face on that screen every Final Four for four years straight, so <laughs> I think the movie... Uh, Director and producer Rory Karp, he got that sense that, hey, Leitner can laugh at himself a little bit. He can understand where some of that good good nature, good humor fun uh, comes from. And, you know, people like to do it. They People love to say who they hate, who they like, and it's just part of the life. So I did not have a, an objection to the title. Um, but then you think about, well, how is it going to affect my children and yeah. my wife and my parents? So, you know, that was something that made me pause for a second but then I think we all realize that it's going to be a great film a wonderful opportunity for me so we're all fine with it and to tell you the truth the first time I saw the movie I loved it and the second and third time I've seen it I just love it more and more you know what it is it's it's fantastic and and my favorite part of it Christian is right after it's it's done and we're looking at you with your family your your immediate family your your wife and your kids and it and it and it looks like you're showing your son. How old is your son, by the way? My son is nine. You're, it looks like you're showing your nine-year-old son your game-winning shot against UConn for the first time on YouTube. And that's where it sort of hit me is that perhaps your your kids are learning about you and who you are and the way that the sports world has viewed you since you pretty much came out of Western New York for the first time through this documentary. Is that the case? Well, it is the case in some ways because, you know, I don't think any adult man runs around saying, hey, look what I did, look what I did. So so I really don't do that to my children. And, um, I mean, the first time my daughters, who are teenagers now, ever saw the Kentucky game and saw what I did in the Kentucky game was when my father was in town. And he pulled them aside and said, I got to show you something your daddy did 20 years ago. So... <laughs> Um, and in the same way, I've never showed my son, who's only nine years old, I've never really shown him the Kentucky shot or the UConn, the UConn shot. So, I mean, it's just not something you do. You don't want to brag like that. You don't want to be arrogant like that, especially to your children. So I've never showed him, and Rory and I thought it would be really neat to show him for the first time right there uh, for the film. And um, it's just a very neat thing, like you say. It's, it's neat to see it. And then it kind of... It kind of it humanizes me to the rest of the world to let them know that I'm a, a normal man, a normal person. I have a family. I have feelings. I have kids and a wife, just like everybody else. So it humanizes me a little bit, which is nice to see. Christian Leitner here on the Rich Eisen Show. And then uh, the, just seeing some of the relationship you had with your teammates, the one with Bobby Hurley certainly resonates not only because of what you did on the court together and then the stories about how um, you used to go at him and then he used to go back at you. And now he's the coach of Buffalo, leading them into the NCAA tournament from your hometown, Christian. What is that like for you seeing Bob, Bobby Hurley as the head coach of the University of Buffalo having playing a big game in the NCAA tournament tomorrow? I know, Rich. Isn't that awesome that Bobby Hurley's torment for the rest of his life is that he has to work in Buffalo where there's more people like me. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I tease them about that all the time, and it's just a joke because people think, you know, oh, Leitner and Hurley didn't get along. Listen, there was no one I hung out with more on that Duke team than, than Bobby Hurley. We used to be on national teams together in the summertime. 
we used to hang out together all the time during the school year and the basketball season. And he was hard on me, and I was hard on him, and everyone was on the team was hard on me, and I was hard on everyone on the team. And it's just no big deal. So I don't understand why it continues to be a story. Mm-hmm. But it does, and it's just interesting. And, um, you know, sometimes people don't realize what goes on behind the scenes of championship teams. Every championship team you look at, you can figure out, well, who was, who was the one pushing everybody? Who was the one that was making everyone ultra competitive? And um, every championship team has those types of leaders. And it all started with Coach K at Duke. And he passes it down to his uh, captains, his seniors, and the better players on his team. And that's the only reason why we were good, because he did things the right way. He challenged his, his players to hold each other accountable, to push each other. And that's what we did. We pushed each other. How do you watch a Duke game, Christian Leitner, as they get set for what you, I'm sure, hope is another uh, magical tournament run? How do you watch a Duke game as a fan where, you're, where you get upset when things aren't going potentially the Blue Devils' way or watching Coach K and saying, I know what he's doing. I see that. He tried that on me. What, what's it like for you to watch a Duke game in the NCAA tournament? <laughs> The way I watch a Duke game is definitely through the DVR device because uh, I want to be able to skip over all the commercials. Okay. But what I do is I sit there and thoroughly enjoy the way his teams play. And I sit there and wish and pray that I could be 20 years old and do it again because he's absolutely the best. Every time I watch a game, it takes me back to when I was playing for him. Every defensive possession and offensive possession, I can say, man, he did that with me and he's still doing it. Or or look how he's changed and look how he's evolved with the changing times of, of the game of basketball. And he continues to impress me. He impressed me 30 years ago in 1985 when I started loving the Duke Blue Devils, and he still impresses me to this day. And I'm sure you're aware, you take a look at the bracket, that it is possible that Duke and Kentucky play uh, for all the marbles. I'm very aware of that. I'm very aware of that. What do you think would happen should that happen, Christian? <laughs> Boy, that would be really, really neat, wouldn't it? And um, I think a lot of people would love to see that game. And uh, there's some people out there that think it happens for a purpose, and the NCAA set it up that way. And there's some people that think it's total, totally random. And all I know is that I'm going to enjoy it. And hopefully it will happen. I have... Uh, I have Kentucky, Wisconsin, Duke, and Virginia making the Final Four. Okay. And hopefully, hopefully Duke and Kentucky will, will battle it out in the final game. So who do you have? Fill out the rest of your bracket for me here. Well, of Christian. course, Duke. Of okay. course, Duke. Against Kentucky? I mean, against Kentucky, uh, you know, my brain might say, hey, Kentucky's great. Maybe choose them, but I can't pick them over Duke, so my heart got to go with Duke. And lastly, Christian, um, you have the all-time record for most points in an NCAA tournament. We all know these days if somebody with talent like you plays in the NCAA, um, the, the likelihood of them staying all four years is so small. Do you think the record you currently hold for most points in an NCAA tournament will last forever? You know, I do think that it will last forever, but only 99% of me does because there is a chance that someone who's good will stay for four years and that they might have as much success as we were able to have when I was at Duke. Um, But in general, I'm 99% sure that that uh, mark is going to last forever. Well, Christian, I appreciate the time. The, uh, the 1991 Michigan Wolverine fan in me right now cannot believe how cordial I've been to you this entire interview. But I'm a professional, and I truly respect you and, and appreciate you for everything that you stand for and everything that uh, uh, you've done and for taking the time to call into this show. I appreciate it. All right, Rich. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it, too. You bet. That's Christian Leitner, two-time NCAA champion, four times in the Final Four. The Rich Eisen Show. Weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.